Okay, so uh, what I was saying is that uh, today I only prepared an introductory on ethical business management. And we are only going to go through the terms that you will be coming across as you go through this course. And then I will explain to you the difference between ethics and the law. Then also we are going to look at um, how we are going to analyze how it's uh, possible to make an ethical mistake. And then lastly, we'll look at the importance of ethics in business management. So as we are going through this course, my hope is that we'll cover everything that is in your study guide and I'll be adding more information, of course, and then we'll be having discussions. We'll, um, at some point, we'll do the assignment together. We'll do the assignment together. I'll prepare the assignment for you and show you how you are supposed to tackle it. And lastly, we'll prepare for the exams together. I'll bring some uh, past examination papers so that you have a feel of how uh, the exam comes like, and then we'll go through them so that by the time you get into the exam, you are very, very confident. I'm sorry about that mishap. We've lost a bit of time, so I'll try to rush a bit. So the four terms that I want us to look at uh, as we go through this, um, ethics, values, morals, and dilemma. So I'll share a screen. Uh, I'm sure earlier you could just see the screen changing. I was busy explaining in the background. <laughs> so these are the terms. Firstly, we are looking at ethics. As we undertake this course, what we are saying is that there is ethical, um, there is a lack of ethics in business organizations. And in some cases, it is done deliberately. In other cases, it is done without intent. Maybe the manager has no knowledge of ethical business management. Maybe they, they never studied this. They, they don't know that what they are doing is actually unethical. But we also have intentional um, and ethical behavior where you get issues such as corruption in the government departments, in the private sector, in our workplaces, uh, you know, everywhere we are just lacking uh, ethics. And the reason why we want you to be equipped with knowledge on ethical business management is so that when you enter the industry, as you are working in managerial positions um, in your workplaces, you know what ethics are. You know how to make ethical decisions. You know how to um, how to differentiate between something that is ethical and something that is not ethical. So, as we start, I'll just describe what ethics are. Ethics are these are the moral principles that um, govern a person's behavior. So, when we talk of ethics, we are simply talking of what is right and what is wrong. In general, this is ethics. I've described there the first line there, it says the branch of knowledge that deals with moral principles. So basically that is ethics. As we go through these lessons, we'll be going deeper into this. I know it sounds too general right now, but as I said, this is just the introduction. We are building a skeleton of our module. And then as we go, each and every week we'll be adding more flesh to it so that by the time we get to exam time, we have something that is solid. We know we are confident that we will pass. Then when I was describing the ethics, I used the word moral, moral principles. But what, what are morals? Morals are standards of behavior. And these uh, can easily be defined as right and wrong. So a principle that governs your behaviors, that which makes you to behave 
the way you do. Those are your morals. That's how we describe you. If, if we say um, Susan has less morals, Susan is, is, is of poor morals, we are saying Susan is leaning on the wrong more than on the right. And someone who has high moral value, it means they are um, on the right of society. And then the other word that we're going to look at is values. Now, values and morals, they are very, very similar, but the values, this is what governs the way we behave, the way we communicate, the way we interact. But I want you to look to, to, to check the difference between values and morals. So firstly, the values, they are usually stated in a single word. It's a single word. So when we talk of values, I've given some examples there. Integrity, accountability, persistence, trustworthiness. This is someone who has got good values. They, they, they have this as something that is unique to them. Remember the values that I have might not be the values that you have. For example, one of us might, might have persistence and the other one gives up easily. So those are, are different values. The other one might, have, might be trustworthy and yet someone else is not trustworthy. That is a value that they have. So that value, it then makes them behave the way they do. Someone who is trustworthy, you will see the way they behave, that this person is trustworthy. Even when you describe them to someone, you're going to say, this person is trustworthy because he did this and that. So their behavior, um, it emanated from the values that they have. So the morals, however, the morals, are usually um, expressed as a statement. When we say respect others, those are morals. When we say honesty, that is a value. Now, the values also, they come from within the person. They, 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 are, they are intrinsic. Like I was saying that the values that I have are not the values that you have. So it's, it's it's really different from one person to the other on the values. So the value will make you to be who you are. And yet the morals, these are the things that we expect in society. This is for a, a, a group of people, some, some behavior that is expected. Now, you see that the morals, it is easy to sway from morals because these are societal expectations. But the values, because they come from within, you'll find that someone who has got a particular value will not um, easily sway from, from that. For example, someone who's, who is patient, we say um, this person is patient. They will not suddenly lose their patience because it is within them, it is how they are. And then the last word that we are going to look at is um, the dilemma. Okay, before I move to the dilemma, I've listed three types of values for you there. So firstly, we have what we call the strategic values from the word strategic. I'm sure you can tell these are uh, the values that we share within the organization. For example, uh, when you have as an organization you have your mission, your values, and 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 your your vision, you are going to list the values that you would want all the employees or everyone in within that organization to have. For example, accountability. I often see most organizations putting accountability and integrity as their values, and then we have job values, these are related to the tasks that someone is, is um, someone is undertaking. So for example, if we say um, an accountant, an accountant, the values that we expect from an accountant are different 
from the other jobs. For example, for an accountant who might say, our accountant has accountability. Because remember, this is someone who deals with money or they are accurate. So accuracy becomes a value that is expected within that job, that specific job. And then we have ethical values. Uh, the ethical values, this is what uh, upholds someone to be who they are as, as, as an individual. So you might have uh, two managers, one has got transparency, the other one does not have transparency. So even though they are doing the same job, but you find that one is more open to the employees, you, you're likely to tell them uh, the truth about something, uh, the truth about the situation in the organization, and yet the other one prefers to keep the information to himself. So this is now uh, at a personal level. So these are the values. Then lastly, we talk of a dilemma. So these four words, please master them. As soon as we finish the lesson, I'm going to give our host a, 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 these slides so that you can go over them and you master these four words because we will come across them over and over as, as, as we are progressing with this module. So the dilemma, a dilemma is a situation where one must make a difficult choice between either two undesirable or two desirable situations. So with a dilemma, it can be good, it can be bad. Now, when something is um, undesirable, for example, in the work situation, let's say um, during COVID, during COVID, most managers were faced with a dilemma. The businesses had no money. So they had a difficult choice to make, whether to retrench workers or to cut their salaries. So both the choices are undesirable. Both choices are undesirable. So that is what we call a dilemma. Even when the situation is, 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 is um, the opposite and there is a desirable um, choice to be made, that is still a dilemma. Then we have um, a social dilemma, which is a situation that arises where whatever decision you make may put other people at risk within the society. So that is what we call a social dilemma. And then there is a personal dilemma, which is the choice that you have to make in your own personal capacity and you have to decide uh, which choice to make between the undesirable or the desirable. So when it is two desirable situations, let's say for example, you have, uh, you have won the lotto and you have to make a desirable uh, decision. Maybe at work they have only given you a week off and you are deciding, should I go to this place for a, or for a holiday or should I buy a very expensive car? So both situations are desirable, but it is still a dilemma because you can, maybe you can only do one, the money is only enough to do one of those uh, choices. So before I go on to the difference between ethics and law, are there any questions? Is there anyone with a question? Anyone with a question, you can unmute and ask, or you can type for everyone will be able to see the question so that I don't keep on um, proceeding. Maybe I've lost someone. So remember the word ethics, it's, uh, its origin is from the Greek word ethos which means custom or character. Uh, good ethics refer to something which is good, which is right, which is just, and then bad ethics are the opposite. Professional ethics, we are talking of ethics with, uh, the, the, within a corporate setup, within 
uh, maybe a workplace or a school or college situation. And when we say ethics, at, um, the, when we talk of professional ethics, ethics at a corporate level, we do have um, those components which, which make an organization to be ethical, which make an organization to be identified as ethical. I've listed a few there, and some of these you often find them within the values of, uh, of organizations. When you walk into their reception, you'll find a big board there, written values, and then they will list them. So I've listed a few transparency, accountability, confidentiality, um, objectivity, respect, all those are ethical can be ethical uh, um, values at a corporate level. Can I proceed? Can I proceed to the difference between law and ethics? I just need one person to confirm so that I'm sure we are still together. Okay, thank you, Gerald. Thank you. So let's proceed now to the difference between ethics and law. So what I've done there is I've uh, put a table for you. Like I said, I'm going to send you these slides so that you can read through uh, when you have time. Uh, so I'll just pick maybe just three. There's three differences, the rest you can read. So the law, these are set of rules and regulations which are created and enforced by a country. And the intention of the law is to regulate human behavior for the common good so that we are able to live with one another. When the law says, um, if you still, you'll be put in jail for two years, the intention is so that you do not steal, so that we are able to live together as a society. And yet the ethics, these are moral principles that govern your behavior, that govern everyone's behavior. So when you break the law, you get punished. But when you go against ethics, you get socially isolated. So if you are not a good person, you will not be arrested for not being a good person. You live within society, but you will not be a favorite of men. The law is interpreted by the courts and yet ethics are interpreted by each individual or society. This is how you find something that is ethical in one society may be unethical in another society. Then the law again, it is the law is formal. It is formal. There is a written document somewhere. There is a constitution. There is um, the acts of parliament. All those those make up the law. And yet the ethics they are unwritten. We assume that everyone knows. We assume that everyone knows what is right and what is wrong. And then um, lastly. The law is enforced by the police and the courts and ethics. They have limited enforcement. There is nothing much really we can do about someone who is unethical unless they break the law. Then we are able to take the law and enforce it on them. So just being unethical, if you haven't broken the law, you still stay within the society, but you will be isolated. People will not like you. Uh, but when you break the law, something can be done about it. So those are the differences you can read through. There are quite a number. I've only picked a few there. Then um, maybe before I proceed, is there any question on the differences between law and ethics? Anyone with a question? Can I proceed? Okay. 
Okay. So, just before we finish, we'll look at the principles in, develop, in the development of an ethical reasoning framework. What am I saying there? I'm simply saying, how do you think about what is right and wrong? What is it that you use to say this is right, this is wrong? What is it that you consider before you say, okay, I will not do this because this is right, or I will not do this because it is unethical. So there are seven basic principles that you consider. The first one is welfare. You look at the well-being of others. You know that if I do this, it's going to affect the others in a bad way. So this is likely to be unethical. If you know that it's going to be for the good of others. And when I say others, remember, I mean, be it in a society, be it in a family, be it um, your colleagues at work and whatever setup, you are just looking at the welfare of the others around you. And then you also think, um, you also use the reasoning to say this is right, this is wrong, using duty. Duty is something that is expected of you. If you are put in a certain position, there are behaviors that we expect of you. So, for example, if you are a policeman, you have the duty to be ethical. So, someone can be ethical, can make an ethical decision based on the duty. And then the rights. What are the rights of the people around you? What, 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 what is the moral entitlement or the legal entitlement when it comes to this? When you say um, children have got a right to education, when you do not take your child to school, it means you are being unethical because that child has a legal right to be taken um, to school. So you might make that decision to take your child to school just because it is their right. You do not want to be found on the wrong side of their legal entitlement or their moral entitlement. Sometimes it is also because you are considering fairness, just fairness, just saying, okay, uh, I'll do this because it is only fair. I'm not doing it for any other reason except that I do not want to uh, be accused of favoritism or discrimination. So you do that which is fair and you end up doing something which is ethical. And then uh, honesty. Honesty, I think it's, it's uh, very clear. You make an ethical decision based on honesty. You just want to be honest, you want to you want the truth to be revealed, so you make a certain decision. This is um, most common with um, in the workplace with whistleblowers. We are going to look at whistleblowing as a as a subtopic one of these days. That's where you see that whistleblowers, most of them, they do what they do because they have a need for honesty. They want to be honest. So they, 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 they tell the truth about something even though they know this is going to affect them. And then dignity. Also dignity, you find whistleblowers, they, they, they like uh, to maintain their dignity. They want to be worthy of honor, to be respected. So they will whistleblow. But this is also another basic principle that can make uh, someone say this is ethical or this is unethical. If, if it impacts negatively on your dignity, if you feel that if I do this, I will lose my dignity, I will lose my honor, then most likely that is unethical. But if you feel that if I do this, I will be honored, I will be respected, then that is likely to be an ethical decision. Then lastly, integrity. 
like I said before, integrity is just having high morals, being morally standing. So those are the principles that we use in uh, making ethical decisions, that is uh, ethical reasoning. It is based on these seven basic principles. You need to know this. There's they, uh, these high chances of getting a question on the seven basic principles, be it in your assignments or in the, in the examination. But how is it that you end up making an ethical mistake? How, how can one make an ethical mistake, whether as an individual or as an organization? We have seen organizations making terrible, terrible ethical uh, decisions to an extent where sometimes they end up uh, having to apologize on national television or people end up protesting against a certain company because they made a, an unethical decision. How, how do we get to that point? Now, as an individual, it usually emanates from poor management and guidance where you, you are just lacking someone who is going to uh, tell you that this is wrong, this is wrong because of this and that. And then also because as people we are different, what might seem unethical to me might seem to be ethical to you. So if I make a decision and I think it is ethical, maybe in the society that I'm in, it is unethical. So that's the other reason why an individual might make an ethical mistake. Then we also have other features like self-interest, you know, people who are greedy, uh, bias, all those um, negative uh, features that can be found within people. Those are what make the, 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 an individual to make an ethical mistake. Then also, as an organization, how do we come up with and ethical decisions. Okay, firstly, it is when we make the decisions to build up. We are supposed to make a decision today. We put it off. We say, okay, we will look at this tomorrow. The next day, something comes up. We say, we will look at it tomorrow. Until at the end of the day, there are so many decisions we have to make up. We end up making the wrong one. So as an organization also, we can have um, communication problems, communication barriers. Uh, I've given an example there of filtering where uh, person A is told a message and because they are um, intimidated by the person they are supposed to give the message, they filter the message. So they don't say it the way it's supposed to be said. They 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 feel tight in that they leave out some parts or they, they change the tone. And at the end of the day, a wrong decision is made. Or the organizational structure itself, it may be, it may be a structure where uh, you find uh, tasks are overlapping, there is no clear chain of command, there is just ambiguity here and there. So, decisions end up being made which are unethical. But lastly, why do we need as an organization to make ethical decisions? Why is it, why is it important? Why is, why is it even important for us here to be doing this, uh, this module, to be doing this course, to have it as something that is relevant to, to our qualification. So those are the importances of ethics that I've listed there. I'll go through them quickly. We are left with only two minutes. Um, the first one is reputation. So as an organization, you want to have a good reputation. You want to have a reputation uh, where you are seen as a good organization, as an ethical organization. This is why you would want to have 
good ethics. Secondly, public satisfaction. You want to be liked by the public. Remember, when you are liked by the public, you get loyal customers. You might want to set an example. Maybe in the corporate world, you are competing against your rivals. Uh, let's say there is um, organizations in the same business like uh, ShopRite, Pick and Pay, Boxer. One of them wants to be known as the one that is ethical more than the other. So you, you set high ethical standards. You set an example in the industry so, so that everyone knows that this one has got very high ethics. Then for employee relations, you want a, 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 an environment within your organization where employees are not always complaining about ethics, you, you don't have um, cases pending at the labor court and so on. So you can also have ethics because of employee relations. It is also important because it is expected by stakeholders. You are not likely to get investors if your company is well known for corruption. Who is going to invest money in your company if they know that your company is well known for unethical behavior? Also, a very simple reason, you want to avoid legal issues. You don't want to be seen in court. You don't want to be paying lawyers to be defending you uh, because of ethical issues. And then lastly, this is summarizing everything else. This is summarizing um, the first six points. The seventh point is that you want to realize the positive benefits and improved business outcomes. If you are ethical, you get respect in the industry, you get um, loyal uh, customers, you get loyal employees, you get a, a, a good standing within the industry. At the end of the day, all that brings positive benefits. So I'm sorry I had to rush. It's because I, um, I lost those first 30 minutes. But this is what I had prepared just as an introduction. But before we finish off, is there anyone with a question on anything that we covered or concerning the way we are going to conduct the, the lessons from now on? Is there anyone with a question? I had to rush a bit because what I had prepared was supposed to take an hour, but I ended up covering it in 30 minutes. But like I said, I'm sending the slides to you. You go through them. Maybe if you see something that you don't understand, the next time we meet, we can start with that. Is everyone happy? Can I have some confirmations? Okay, we have someone saying, all oh, good from my side. Thanks so much. All right, thank you so much for attending. I'm really, really sorry about um, not having audio at first. Um, I'll sort it out so that next time we never get that same, uh, that same challenge again. I hope to meet you all next time. I hope to meet you all next time. Have a good night if there are no questions. Good night. Thank you. Have a lovely evening further. Thank you. <laughs> good night. Bye. Goodbye, I'm now ending the meeting. Please come again next week.